Welcome aboard, trainers! I'm Professor Bodhi, and today we're studying pseudo legendary paradoxes. Professor, what does it mean to be a pseudo legendary? Well, Toasty, pseudo legendary Pokemon sit in the upper echelon, just shy of mythical and legendary Pokemon status. They're rare to find, take a long time to raise, and evolve at high levels, but are absolutely worth it in the end. Today, I've got several cases lined up of paradoxes that resemble those Pokemon and a few that have been reclassified based on how the past, and the future, has changed them. Without further delay, let's begin! This first case features some uninvited guests, and will be moving behind Officer Jenny to retrieve a powerful ancient ancestor to a Pokémon once modified by Team Plasma. That's right. The organization seems to be alive and well, operating in smaller cells, and having infiltrated Area Zero to retrieve the Pokémon to presumably develop an even more devastating version of their previous iteration. The paradox in question behaves erratically and considers anyone approaching a threat, so we'll have to move with caution. Even at range, we're in grave danger, so stay alert. Paradox of the past. Stay alert. Genesect made waves when it rocked Unova after Team Plasma's careless mishandling of their creation. Seems like these organizations never learned their lesson, huh? Stinger Bane was wrangled from the expedition after a long and drawn out battle. Able to scuttle across walls and even hang on the ceiling, we got to witness how it was a terror all those years ago when it was an apex predator. Its stinger not only pierces armor at close range with deadly speed and precision, but is able to fire bursts of acid from long range. Where its weakness resides, however, is in its method of attack at said range. The carapace of the creature lifts along with its tail, exposing its fleshy back, so it chooses to attack at sniping range when it's safe, bringing its shell hood down for a mid-range shot for most of its takedowns. It's no wonder that Team Plasma chose it once before, and recently tried again. I had been catching up with Hustle one of my colleagues here in the Paldea region when he brought up rumblings of a dragon-like Pokemon that didn't formally fit the bill. Area Zero is quite large, and areas where Pokemon that roam the water are scarce there but do exist. The shadow of a terrifying beast in the water prompted Professor Sada to reach out to the dragon-type specialist, and Hustle in turn has now trusted me to have his back. Trainers, I'll need you to stay on the boat while Hustle and I take to the depths to find this beast. If anything goes wrong down below, I trust you to have my back. Paradox of the past. Frenzy Tide. Frenzy Tide is the prime example of nature giving a creature all the tools it needs to thrive, before whittling down the excess through evolution across millennia. Nature finds a way, and so does this massive killing machine. This ancient ancestor to both Garchomp and Sharpedo is equipped with dangerous tools to shred its foes on nearly every part of its body. We can also observe repeating visual elements of the aforementioned megaforms as well, just like Soaring Moon carries attributes of the modern day Mega Salamence. In the deep, every aspect to this creature is messy, from how it swims, battles, and even eats. This unwieldy creature has too many options to use to incapacitate its unlucky prey. Because of the ripsaw nose, it primarily jousts towards its foe, skewering them before extending out their mouth and shredding their prey with rows and rows of gnarled teeth like a wood chipper. Trust me when I say, it's not pretty. When Steven Stone calls, you answer. I was able to speak with the former champion of the Hoenn region when he asked me to accompany him into Area Zero for a new mission. A master of the steel type, Professor Turo entrusted Steven's battle-hardened Pokémon to withstand the attacks of a dangerous Pokémon that needs to be wrangled. It's been pulverizing both other out-of-time Pokémon and the research facilities that are scattered across the crater. Trainers, we'll be joining Mr. Stone in an incredibly dangerous descent to find a living weapons system. If this Pokémon falls into the hands of Team Plasma or the likes of any evil organization, it could spell danger for us all. It seems like in the future, Dark Forces used Metagross's incredible intellect and processing power to turn it into a full-on assault force called Metal Gear. With an optic sensor that can locate and lock on multiple targets at incredible range, this Pokémon 
who I can barely even call it such in its current state, is able to decimate its foe with an alarming number of options between rockets, electric bolts, and plasma beams. Metagross is such an impressive creature that deserves respect, and to see it have been turned into a machine of destruction to be used at the behest of humans is depressing, but worry not, trainers. As I've said before, if we can act now, we can change the future. I myself live by a quote from an old friend. Building the future and keeping the past alive are one and the same thing. Hope we all keep it in mind moving forward. With Metal Gear, I'm reminded that humans are capable of dark and deadly deeds. For this coming case, I am humbled by the opposite, that humans are resilient, and like we always have, so long as we're with our Pokémon, we can overcome anything. Seems like the Pokémon we're off to catch won't give us much trouble, but we'll need at least a dozen of us to wrangle even just one of them as they are, perhaps, one of the largest paradoxes we've ever come across. How exactly I mean, you'll just have to wait and see. Just be sure to pick your jaw up from the floor when we reach the site, although I'm sure we'll be able to spot the paradox far ahead in advance. The world of the future is bleak, but when Pokémon and humanity work together, beautiful things can happen. It seems like for every dark mind that creates a metal gear, a beacon of light can build Harvest Rise, a walking solar tower of a Pokémon that nurtures fruit and vegetables to be harvested by its trainers. In the future where Harvest Rise derives, I presume that dangerous smog and weather condition make it hard for crops, and life as a whole, to thrive. With the help of their long necks, this future Tropius features solar panels that optimize what little sun breaks through the conditions of the future to feed what little of humanity is left. Having this Pokémon here gives us an opportunity to relay the good intentions of those still fighting in the future to help out those in need now. Humanity may still have a chance yet, and I need you, trainer, to continue your journey and help set an example for future generations to come. Genoscorp are vicious Pokémon that utilize their deadly tails for both close and long-range combat. As their carapace is attached to their tail, they expose their weak body when this Pokémon snipes their foes from long range. The venom it produces is so chemically unstable that it can burn, paralyze, or poison its foe, depending on how it was administered. As Thresh Shred is constantly growing lines and lines of gnarled teeth, it causes great pain to the Pokémon keeping it in a state of anguish of which it uses as a fuel to tyrannize any and all life form around it. Always moving, this Pokémon reserves its energy in preparation to quell its never-ending appetite. Although quite slow, it is able to pick up enough speed to eviscerate its prey, instantly feigning them from the shock from the crash. Mechacross utilized the supreme intellect of Metagross as foundation to allow it to break the laws of computing to develop algorithms that make it an undefeated strategist in battle. This Pokémon is seemingly able to use preemptive maneuvers even before its foe is capable of thinking of how to act, obliterating them with terrifying speed, accuracy, and efficiency. Philanthropy are commonly found in herds, racing their heads towards the sky to catch the sun. It harvests and amplifies solar energy to develop unique superfoods growing along its body. The fruits they grow have not yet been invented or discovered in our modern day, and pack such taste and nutrients that already have altered the trajectory of both culinary and medical fields for decades to come. Thanks for watching today's episode, trainers! I want to give a shout out to our growing community who helped in so many ways for today's art over at my streams. Don't hesitate to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can join us and get sneak peeks at new content in development. I also want to take this time out to show some massive love to my patrons. Thank you so, so much for your support. I've been Professor Bowden, 
aka Mr. Bonnie John. And I'm being Until next time.